Hello, Carrie. Hi, Jessica. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, awesome. I'm in my studio and uh, looking forward to us talking. So amazing. Yes. And um, yeah, your studio looks really, really cool. I've never seen your studio, but it's it's very um, classical artist like. Thanks. It's I mean, it's small. It's definitely not. I mean, it's a bedroom in my house. Uh, uh, it's um, but, you know, it's it suits my needs. Mm -hmm. Natural light got north light. So it's pretty good. That's amazing. That is amazing. Well, for those of you who do not know Kerry, um, Kerry is an artist. He's um, most famous for his portraits. And I'm just going to read a little bit about you um, for those of you who don't know who Kerry Dunn is. But Kerry Dunn is a Philadelphia artist and is part of the movement of new masters that has sought to reclaim the methodologies of the old masters, almost completely lost during the 20th century. This movement is a large part due to the atelier system, which is small studio schools, each led by a master painter that have been on the rise since the mid nineties around the world. Studio in Caminati in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States is one such school. And this is where Kerry studied between 2003 to 2008 with the renowned portrait painter, Nelson Shanks. And Kerry now teaches at the school. And Kerry's work is firmly rooted in the academic traditions of painting from life as practiced by the old masters. Kerry feels most drawn to the art of portrait painting where characters are cast upon a stage and a narrative is inevitable and the ever elusive challenge of creating a master work. Here, here. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's a life, lifelong endeavors there, yes. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. And then um, Kerry has had multiple exhibitions. Um, he currently in Philadelphia showing the Stanick Gallery and he has also exhibited at um, the Florence Academy of Art Gallery um, 1261. And where else? Um, uh, Principal Gallery. Um, um, oh, I can't remember now. Various galleries across the country. Yes. Many. Primarily the US. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really, I haven't really broken beyond those borders. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Um, and then he's also been on the cover of American Art Collector, and he has won several awards. So, um, yes. is there anything you want to add to that, Carrie? Anything more specific? Um, I've been in a couple. I've been in one other podcast. I was in uh, um, a Suggested Donations. My second podcast, I was in Suggested Donation, which was really great. Mm -hmm. um, and... I was like going to say, I can say something else. Oh, I've been in like a couple magazines, blah, blah, blah. Um, a couple videos. Yes. You know, these opportunities come along whenever, whenever you're hot and, and uh, every now and then, which happens from time to time. So mm -hmm. you try to try to collect those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's so amazing. Um, what do you think makes those times when, when you're hot for an artist? Um... That's a good question. Uh, I mean, the biggest award I've gotten probably so far nationally was, um, you know, I don't know if I totally know the answer to this question, but I think, you know, you're trying to do the best work you can and you're trying to be inspired and you're trying to set these big goals. Um, something that's helped me sometimes that really pushes me to, cause I'm a little bit competitive. So, um, is like comp, you know, for me, it's like comp competitions are sometimes helpful because it gives me like a bigger goal. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got best of show at the Portrait Society. It's going back a ways now in 2013, but that was the piece that got on the cover mm -hmm. of American Art Collector. And I remember when I was doing that, I knew I wanted to do a portrait and I had entered that competition a few times before mm -hmm. um, with, you know, okay results um and I was like you know what I don't know I just got it in my head that you know I was gonna really that I you know how do I you know how do I do better in this national competition and um I really was mulling over that and it kind of was able to sort of figure out what would be my best strategy and um 
I think the process, and I was also thinking, like, you know what, if I'm going to really go for this, like, I need to try and win this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, you it's, know, it's, yeah. Mm. Well, I was going to say, um, yeah, for competitions, like, like, there's a lot of competitions out there. And right now I'm like working on works and, but, mm. but like, but I know I don't have anything that I feel right now that I would want to win or would feel like it would be deserving of winning right now. Um, there's no piece that I would want to have that amount of exposure right now. I see, um, yeah. But, but that's so cool that you were able to be like, okay, how, how am I gonna win this? I'm gonna like actually strategize. Um, no, I would love to know, and I'm sure a lot of artists would love to know as well. Was that like, do you feel like entering the competition a bunch of times kind of gave you an edge to actually winning it? Like you knew kind of what you were going into, what the judges were looking for. Did that have anything to do with it? You asked such, such good questions. Um, uh, yes, yeah. So it, it kind of gave me an idea because I thought I had done, had some put in some pieces that were solid. And um, I was like, why didn't I do better? You know, and I, and I had asked a few people and, and somebody said to me, well, you should put a background in it. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so that was a little, a little note. Um, so yeah, that previous experience definitely kind of gave me a sense of what that competition was looking for. So like, there's another, I'm trying to enter right now. I'm about to enter another national composition out in Boochiver, which I would love to get into. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm definitely spending the time thinking about who are, who's the jury, you know, what's their general aesthetic, like what kind of stuff gets in there, you know, so that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, put myself in the best position. And, and then it like, uh, you know, for the Porsche Society of America, it really pushed me to create probably the best portrait I've, been, I've done to date. So that, that really helped push me. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, I find that when I have, not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a competition, but if I have like a goal, like a show, or like I'm going to apply to a grant or, or, or a competition um, or applying to like a jury thing or something. Um, it helps me tremendously to have that because it's like a focal point for all of your efforts. Um, and it also helps you focus on, you know, bettering your work in that way, whatever way that they're looking for. So um, it definitely matters what you choose to compete in, I think. Um, and like there's a lot of things that myself as a figurative artist and probably you also as a figurative artist wouldn't consider applying to because they're not, like a figurative artist has never won them. Like it, do, it just doesn't make sense for us to apply to something like that. Um, yeah, right. So right. that's what I would say to artists who are like looking to apply to a lot of competitions is really do your research and see where you fit in to these competitions. Um, because if you're, you know, a figurative artist and you're applying to something that's like, um, everyone who's won in the past has been like performance art or like sculpture, you know, then it's, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like go where you're celebrated. <laughs> absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. Where you, where, you, where you feel like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Where you feel like you can, mm -hmm. uh, where you fit in, I guess, or where you feel like you can, you can you know, that you'll, yeah, you'll fit in. Yeah, yeah, where they, where they appreciate your kind of work. Exactly. Um, yeah, where, what are a few um, competitions or opportunities that you have liked in the past or that you kind of like feel are good for um, contemporary realist artists? Um, I think it's, I have a list which I haven't looked at. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but I, you know, I, don't, I only do like about four a year pop up probably the Porsche Society. Um, there's the Outland Boot River, which is the National Gallery of, of DC, which is only every three years. So they're oh, yeah. actually accepting until the end of this month. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the National Gallery in London. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's definitely other, other really well-known ones trying to, um, yeah, I was looking into a few of them before this, and um, the BP Portrait Award. Have you ever tried that? That's one? it. Yeah, it's the one in uh, the one in London. Oh, I have. Actually. I did it once, mm -hmm. and um, 
I said I would never do it again. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, their aesthetic is a little more contemporary than what I probably do, even though I think my paintings are becoming a little more contemporary as time goes on. I think I just didn't really fit into their aesthetic, um, even though the painting I, I entered, I thought did. But, you know, I, I will enter it again, I'm sure. You know, at the time, I was more of a starving artist than I am now, and it cost me like $700 to ship it there and back. And Are you serious? Yeah, because I had to build a crate for the painting and it was just expensive. So, um, you know, I think if it would be worth it, uh, if, if you can, you know, if you're, if you, if you can afford it and, you know, if, if you think your chances are, are solid, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, and that's every year. Yeah, except it's not this year. I looked into it. A lot of these- Oh, is that right? Yeah. Are actually canceled this year. So that's something artists can think of. Huh. Okay, that means next year the competition is going to be doubly. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I also think that like, you know, talking about like, you know, how do you get hot or whatever? I mean, Instagram plays a role, of course, in your marketing and, and knowing algorithms, which is something I'm like learning more about right now. And but also just with your work, it's kind of like whatever is going to push you mm -hmm. to be your best and to continue to get better and to strive for um, greater mastery, greater creativity, you know, like going to the museums and, and looking at, you know, the, the, the best of the best. I mean, that's really good too. Yes. Um, so you're talking about like basically using these external things like grants and competitions as tools to spur your, to spur yourself on to like your Push yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, great absolutely point. be inspired and have goals, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, with like getting hot as an artist, do you feel like, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like um, the times where you've been like, you felt like you were like really popping as an artist? Did you feel like first you had to feel like you were really popping or do you think it was like all external? Um, for me, I, I could feel it. Okay. I could feel it like you I knew what I was, yourself. yeah I knew what I was doing was you know my best work for for whatever reason and mm. I, I could just I don't know I just felt like I could feel it yeah I love that so. and that's like that's like so encouraging to other artists too because a lot of times I feel like artists feel like there's so much outside of our control with our art career like you know you're going to enter this thing and it's totally without you, you don't know who's going to pick it or um, you, you don't know when your next collector is going to come from. But what we do have control over is ourselves and keeping our energy really high. And then also right. like really Absolutely. feeling like Key. you're, yeah, feeling yeah. like you're creating your best work because then people pick up on that, whether it's on like Absolutely. Yep. online um, or even just seeing the artwork, honestly, like when you, when you feel like you're creating your best work, like, um, people see that in the artwork and it's no coincidence that, um, and you can tell me if this is true for you, yeah. my best works that I felt were my best works have all sold. Huh. But the ones yeah. that I'm like, eh. I mean, they were, they were good, but you know, right. there's a few of them that I'm still sitting on, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, yeah. So the ones that sold compare to the ones that, that you were like, not as enthused about. Mm -hmm. Did, were those done just for yourself, the ones that sold, like, or did you do them with a, a market in mind um, or an audience in mind? Well, I, I feel like I always have an audience. I, I don't think of my, I don't create for my audience, um, but I, I, I always have in mind, like, um, you know, that people would probably enjoy this. But that wasn't my main motivation. My main motivation for the ones that sold like immediately were, um, it was like, I want to create this because I'm so inspired by this image. I think that's key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a teacher, John DeMartin, um, and he said that one time very casually. He was like, he's like, you know, it's funny, like I've had shows and it's always the pieces that I did not for the show, but just did it for myself that tended to sell 
So I think there's there's something to that. Yeah, um, there's this theory that like, well, it's not a theory, it's science. So like mm. everything's made up of atoms, right? And, okay. you know, all the atoms and the electrons are like what makes up everything. So if everything is like made up of these vibrating electrons, then um, everything is made up of energy. So like right. my computer, oh, cool. yeah. you know, our bodies, our artwork. So when we create yeah. artwork, we're like creating this object that's like imbued with our energy. And if I we're feeling love it. Free, yeah. And that's why like being an artist is so magical, right? Yeah. So if we're feeling really good yeah. about these and we're like, this is like amazing. And we're gonna like, that attitude's gonna like go into the painting and like those electrons will have amazing energy. <laughs> I think that's, I think there's something to that. I do. I, I, yeah. I, I really, I really like that a lot. Yeah. Um, like I, I enjoy, it's funny. I was watching um, this, uh, I'm, I'm watching these masterclass things on that I ordered on, on um, the website and Werner Herzog was, I was listening to for the last two days, filmmaker. And he talks about, oh. um, about when he films, he doesn't like to, and I feel like I could, I could relate to him because he talks about, uh, when he films, he doesn't like to do a lot of preparatory stuff. He just, you know, he kind of gives people just the basics, the basics, and, and then you start filming. You just go because he wants to capture that energy. Mm. He doesn't want it. He says that when you over rehearse and you do all this stuff, that then by the time you're filming, it's like it's like overworking a painting or something. It's like you you lot you you don't have that yeah that whatever that is. So and and that's the way I and that's also why I think I love. Um, doing more, I do really long painting as well, but there's something about all the Prima painting, you know, daily just sketches and, and finishing something in a day or two that's got this energy in it that is my, probably one of my favorite things to do. So I love, I love that situation. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's just like, you know, it's just flowing out of you. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you have exciting. a lot of exciting. Too. Yeah, you can see like all your energy in your brush strokes and stuff. It's very, um, yeah. It's very lively, your work. So I can definitely- mm, Thank that. you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to talk to you because um, you've really set up your life to be able to be a full-time painter. And I kind of wanted to go into like how you can set up your life so that, you know, you can be an artist, you have the time and energy to be an artist. Um, so basically like arranging your life so that it makes sense for you to be an artist. <laughs> if that sure. makes sense. And um, I think we've both done that. So right. I think that um, it can be helpful for people to, to hear about like different practical ways that you can make room in your life to be an artist, both energetically, time-wise, um, monetary-wise, all those things. Yeah. So, um, Maybe it would be helpful to start like um, talking about your education and what you did right afterwards. Sure, yeah. Um, I did write some notes down. So I have a oh, few, cool. a few um, to help sort of organize my thoughts a little bit. But, uh, um, well, you know, I think that, um, I mean, right out of college, you know, I went to an art art college. I was an illustration major, and my fourth year and my fourth my final year, I I kind of dawned on me that I wanted to be a portrait painter, and and I wasn't really as you know a, a keen on illustration, even though I still love illustration. Um, but I knew I I needed more training, so you know. So then I had to I moved in. I lit, I rented a room for my mom, <laughs> and and. Uh, Valley Park cars and saved $14,000 and I moved to New York City and I went to the art students. This is the quick version. Okay. Um, I went to the art students league to search for a teacher. I was searching for a teacher. I would have went anywhere in, in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I lasted seven months in New York before I was like almost broke and I had to come back to Florida with my tail between my legs. But the good, the good thing that came out of that is I did meet a teacher who later opened a small atelier in Philadelphia who was Nelson Shanks. And eight months later, he was like, we're starting a school, you need to be here. So 
I don't know. I kind of feel like the universe almost like lines things up when you have certain intent, put certain intentions out there. Yeah. And um, so, it, you, you know, I think there's different tiers of like artists. You've got the full-time artist, you've got the, the part-time artist, and you've got like the hobbyist. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it was like all in, you know, I have no plan B. Yes. Um, um, so, you know, I got that training by coming to the school in Philadelphia and, um, you know, I, I've always been a, for me, it's always been super important in order to be able to do this, to survive on as little bills as possible. So low overhead is one of my keywords I wrote down. So low overhead, because, you know, you're trying to create time and space mm -hmm. in order to practice and do this thing and have it become you know, sort of like the central part of your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you have a, a job that's too demanding or, you know, you know, I'm 44 years old, I don't have any kids, you know, that all got pushed back. So, you know, in order to um, create the time and the space in order to, to train, to practice, mm -hmm. to develop, um, and then to have that daily practice that you just keep pursuing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, I can, I can, I can totally identify with that. Um, yeah, because, um, for, for my very short story, uh, my mm -hmm. dad, I, um, I went to PAPA, Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Um, yeah. and when I graduated from there, um, I, so I was working throughout school, um, as a makeup artist and, um, right. so I was working at the mall and then I would go to art school and then I would work nights. And um, so it was, it was like, it was certainly a lot. Like looking back now, if I had had, um, if I had not had that job, I would have definitely been able to like put more into school. But at the same time, working that job allowed me to save up money so that I could um, actually buy my first house. And you also right. want to house. Um, I just want to talk about this for a second because I was yes. listening to a podcast by Rebecca Laville Goway. I'm totally butchering her name, I'm sure. But I know um, the name. Yeah, she's a really cool artist, and um, John Dalton did a um, he he was interviewing her, and she was talking about how helpful it was for her to have this house, and she had roommates, right. and like she was like, this allowed me to like have the time and space to be able to do this. And um, so while I was in school, while I was in school, I started showing at this gallery, which eventually went out of business, but um, the owner um, was like a real estate mogul. And, you know, he started showing my work and it was great. And, um, but he would talk to me about like um, how real estate allowed him to like be able to open this gallery and then be able to explore his own art practice and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is really cool. So, um, so I eventually decided to get my real estate license. <laughs> so I actually have my real estate oh, license. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have my real estate license. I got it in a month. All you have to do is go to night school for really? like a Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's like $500 and you get your license and then you're a licensed agent. Now you don't have to do anything That's with it. You can just have it. Um, but for me, it allowed me to go on the MLS system and look for houses in the area because I was huh. like, rent is so expensive, right? And, you know, you're just paying, you're paying whoever owns the place instead of paying yourself, you know? Exactly. So, um, so I was able to look for different properties. Um, and I was like, I had a very small budget. I mean, it was like very small. I'm not going to give any specific numbers, but mm -hmm. um the house I got, <laughs> there's a reason why it was so cheap. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. I can relate. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it was like the cheapest thing I could possibly find um, in, in, a, in a pretty safe neighborhood. So, um, so I was able to find something. And um, so I bought it and, um, and I was, I was really nervous, but I did it. And um, 
And then I ended up hiring people off of like Craigslist and Thumbtack and stuff to like fix up the house. And I mean, it was terrible. There was like cats living in it. Um, you know, it was an abandoned house for 10 years. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. That's pretty brave. Yes. Yes, it was pretty brave. So, um, but once- And to do, it all, to do it all on your own too, you know? Yeah. But once I did that um, and then moved in, like fixed it up and moved in and I'm, I'm here yeah. now. Um, oh, okay. But once I did that, you know, and I wasn't paying like a thousand dollars in rent per month, I was like, this is amazing. Like, um, this is amazing. I mean, I'm saving so much money. And then, and then I got roommates and I was like, I'm making money. This is, I mean, yeah, amazing. Um, yep. So yeah, listen up everybody. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's truly, it, it truly is amazing. And it does, it does feel risky when you're doing it at first, it's, but yeah, it's um, a little scary. It is. Cause you're doing all these big things. And especially as you know, a single woman, like you can have, there is a bit of a stigma there. Like, uh, you know, all that stuff is for men, you know, like building and like all that stuff. Um, but you I mean, you can figure it out and sure. Um, and if you're nervous, like, you know, find some friends um, or yeah. trusted family members to like meet with contractors together, you know, um, but you can do it. Don't hold yourself back. You know, that's, you know, I'm very feminist about that. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's great. But that allowed me to go part-time with my job and, um, yeah, your, your overhead came down. Oh, dramatically. Like, yeah. like three times it's amount down. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And then I was able to like focus so much more time on my art and right. eventually just go, you know, full-time as an artist. Um, but, you know, setting yourself up so that you're able to be an artist in that way um I, can, I just can't overestimate how helpful it is so yeah i, I could not agree more and, and tell me about your yeah. experience Terry. yeah so i have a similar kind of similar experience uh um, i didn't do it by myself i have a my best friend jafong lu who is also a teacher at studio and Kaminati. we sort of came up together and um um, she had been kind of hounding me for a couple of years. She's like, we should buy a house. And I was just like, like buy a house. Like, why do I want to buy a house? Like, I'm not ready for that. And then a couple of years later, I, I had sort of left the nest, so to speak, um, at school. And I was just, you know, wandering around from studio to studio for about a year. And by then I was like, okay, let's buy a house. And so, um, I probably wouldn't have done it on my own. That's why I think it's pretty brave that you did it on your own. Um, but it, you know, and she was really a bit more of the mastermind. And then I think of it and um, she was very determined and, you know, it's like trying to put a, a round peg in a square hole because we're both like starving artists. We don't have any money, <laughs> you know? I had to borrow money from my family to put a down payment. Make a long story short, we, we did find a house um, here in South, South Philadelphia and, uh, She's actually not in the house anymore. She got married and moved out. But, um, uh, but yeah, I, I rent out. Currently, I'm renting out two rooms in the house, and you know, yeah, I make money. So yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's amazing. It's great. It's great. You know, it's great. <laughs> and and you learn a lot too. Like I've I learned I have a small wood shop in the basement. My dad's a carpenter, so um, you know, he I kind of learned some things by osmosis, sort of, and. Um, you just learn things like I can put a toilet in, you know, stuff like that. Like, right. you know, like, like plumbing and electrical kind of freak me out, but um, mm -hmm. you know, I can do, I can do tile work. I can install the dishwasher, you know, basic right. stuff like that. And if, and if it's over my head, yeah, you just, you, you hire somebody. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> and again, I just want to put a plug in there for all my female artists listening. Mm. Um, Cause like, when I was rehabbing this house, like I, I did help out with a lot of it and, um, you know, like installing the floors and, you know, caulking things, painting things. Um, I didn't like yeah. install the windows or, um, do the electrical. Cause you need to go to school for that. That's a whole nother yeah, thing. Yeah. That's, that's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't but, do um, you know, the things that you can do, you're totally capable of doing it. In fact, um, one of the contractors that I hired had a girl helping who was like around my age 
And like, she actually really inspired me because I would come to the site and she would be like there in like her work boots and like with like full garb, like gloves. And she was like doing all the demo and like taking all this stuff out. And I was like, dang, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so don't yeah. be intimidated. But um, yeah, it's, it's really great. And um, you can like dedicate part of the room, part of the house to like your studio space. Exactly. And I, yeah. I just want to say also for artists out there, like, you know, you can make a lot of different things work for you. Like you don't have to like buy a house and rehab it, you know, like we did. You can like, if you're living with your parents, you know, you can sure. yeah. you know, talk to them about like, you know, making the garage into like your studio or, um, you know, getting like a she shed or something and putting it in the backyard. Um, sure. or, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to do it for sure. You know, there's, it's, there's so many different ways or like, yeah, if, you got to kind of like be a, a little bit creative and try to figure, figure out like, how do I reduce my bills and yeah. increase my time and have a space to work? Like, how do I right. do that? Right. And um, I mean, another configuration, you could be renting an apartment and um, also use that as your studio, or you could share an apartment and rent a studio. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could, um, you know, save money. And right. because really, so this is not true universally, especially at high levels, at that time is money. But for many artists who are coming up, they're unknown. They don't have like other skills like, oh, I'm also a lawyer or something, you know. Um, a lot of the jobs that are going to be your side job are ones that pay you hourly or are service jobs. Like for me, like as a makeup artist, um, you know, I was paid per hour. And and how about you? Have you had have you have you had um jobs? Yeah, uh, I, I worked. I worked. Um, I worked in the hotel. I was like a valet and a bellhop, so I oh, did no. that for a long time. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, it worked for me because I could study at school during the day and practice mm -hmm. and get training, get the training that I, I wanted, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I loved getting the training. It was, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but and then at nighttime I would go to my job. And the good thing about it is it was kind of brainless. Yes. So I could show up you know, make my tips, go home, be, you know, get in bed by midnight and repeat it the next five days, you know, mm -hmm. but I think the brainless part was good because then I could, and then the daytime is like when you're, when you right. want to be bored. Okay. So that brings up um, an, another really good point is that, you know, it's not always about saving money. A lot of times it's about saving your best energy for your yes. own work. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and that's why a lot of people who, okay, I've talked to many artists or many people um, who used to be artists. They, they, they'll tell me, oh, I used to be an artist. I actually went to art school, but then I got this job and it's like a good job and it like pays a lot of money and it ended up just like taking over their life. Um, mm. because it was so like demanding it just like eventually sure life. um avoid so that at all costs <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you're serious about being an artist like if you if you truly want to be a professional artist like a full-time working artist yeah you have to put that as like your priority and it's then, like your cornerstone right and then you know finding something that's um, doesn't take up all of your brain space, like valet parking, or for me, makeup artistry was pretty brainless. Um, yeah. But kind of artistic, which I really enjoyed. Sure. Oh, it, definitely. It's very artistic. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. But when, um, but when you have a job, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a, a job, like, like an administrative job, or, sure. and then you start to get like promotions to be like, you know, leading a team or something like that, then it's like, well, you have so much responsibility that, and you have to, um, you have to perform in order to get that paycheck. 
that it kind of becomes like golden handcuffs and then all your energy is spent on that. Next golden season. handcuffs, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so energy is important as well. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, it's like I, I get up in the morning and you know, my studio's here in my house. Some people don't like a studio in their house. Uh, I think I prefer it having tried both in the house and outside. I like my studio being sort of an extension of my own just sort of life. Um, and it's so convenient. I can like, you know, I can just walk in here and, and it's just right there. I mean, I can see why some people don't like it because I mean, if you've got kids mm -hmm. and things that are demanding your energy and your attention, then it might not, maybe it's better to have somewhere separate. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, for, for yeah. me that works. And then yeah. I also want to talk about kind of like taking care of yourself emotionally as an artist. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, which is for me about finding kind of like a community um, because here's the thing, when you go yeah, to Yeah, community is another word that I had written down. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. We're totally on the same page. Um, for me, like- Oh, being yeah. So, and I have another word too. And then I, I wanted to say one other thing about, um, in addition to that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, for me, being an artist is like very, um, it can be very solitary because you're just creating with yourself, right? Um, all the time and unless yes. you're working on a collaborative team if you're just working in your studio it's just you and your painting and your thoughts and um, yep. so a couple of things that have been helpful for me is um, like scheduling time to see friends um, friends family community um, community then, is very important yeah mm -hmm. to be part of like an art community as well and that can look like so yes. many different things it can be like classes online classes an online community um you know an in-person community although that's hard to do these days um and absolutely and then, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then also keeping a schedule for yourself that really helps me to have some sort of structure so you feel like you're actually doing a career you're not just like Absolutely. Um, I don't know. It can feel a little too loosey goosey if I don't have a schedule. <laughs> What's so. your schedule? Um, typically I'll get up by like eight, although I'm trying to move that to like six. Um, and then I will typically check emails, get to like inbox zero. That's always my goal. And then um, I have different I have different days are dedicated to different things. So like a few days of the week are just painting and drawing. And then a few days of the week are like, um, you know, advertising and outreach and then um, taking care of like my coaching clients and then um, Erin Contemporary, the gallery, like they all just need a little love every week. So um, it's helpful for me to have a schedule. Is there a certain time that you always try to get into your studio? Um, yeah, I usually try to get in there before 3 p.m. Okay. And I know that sounds late, but I usually end up painting till like 10, so. Wow, yeah, yeah. But it's, you have that time that was structured to yeah. be in the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used, have a, I, I used to have a, I write notes and they end up all over my walls because whenever I have a thought, I like to keep them and um, otherwise it's like whoop whoop. But, um, and one of them I wrote it down years ago and I was like, the only thing I know for sure, go into this, go to, go into your studio every day. It's like the only thing I know for sure. Like everything else is like, some days I'm, I'm on, some days I'm off, some days I'm just scraping my paint off my palette, you know? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I go in every day. Uh, yeah, so. and you, you know what, Carrie? sometimes things need to germinate before they truly blossom. Um, mm -hmm. Like you can go into the studio for a few days. And honestly, there have been times where I go to the studio and I just sit in a chair and look at a canvas and think for like an hour. <laughs> I, I love it. I think that's great. <laughs> um, but like sometimes things need to germinate. Like I had, yeah. I had an idea for six months this year and then 
I was able to execute it in one day because I oh. finally figured everything out, you know? That's awesome. So even if you're not actually physically working, if you're like mentally working on it, it still counts, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like a- another thought I had was, um, you know, I think for me, it's helpful for my studio to feel like my sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a place that I want to be, mm. you know? So it's like, I want to be there. You know, I think it's like the feng shui of it, you know, it, it just feels good to be there. So like, I, you know, it's, um, I think that helps as yeah. well. Yes. Have you listened um, to the feng shui episode with Marina? I did listen to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, did I listen to that one? I think I did. It's going back a little ways, but um, okay. a lot um, of people I, I believe so. They, yeah, they, they're like, oh, it's so amazing. So yeah, it's very helpful. It, it makes it you want a space where you, you just you love being there, and then you'll yes. you spend more time there. I see you have a little bonsai tree. Is that is that a bonsai tree? I see. Yeah, I just got it. Um, I'm not. I don't have much of a green thumb, so we'll see how long it lasts. But um, uh, I'm going to try to keep it alive. I just felt like I needed some more plants in my house. Yeah. <laughs> so. Good energy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good to have some green, some green. I like, it's a good color, you know, yeah. living things. Living um, things and have. do you want to tell us about that portrait that you have right behind you? Um, so this is, this is, uh, um, it's pretty far back there probably, but uh, it's what I'm working on right now. It's what I'll work on tomorrow, uh, today. I started it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to do these daily, like right now I'm doing these um, daily uh, pan pastel portraits because I'm doing a class at the end of the month, an online thing, which is new for me. I'm trying that out. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, so I can, I can want me to grab it real quick. Sure, sure. Okay. It's, it's in process. Um, so this is like, you know, I'm going to work on it some more today. I, I got went out to the store this morning and got some yellow color. I'm going to pop some yellow mm-hmm. in there. But, you know, I like to start things off very, um, I don't know, a little wild maybe and, and just kind of very free and then not always really sure what's going to happen. I find that mm-hmm. for me, that's fun because I don't know. It's always a surprise. So mm-hmm. this is a, um, a, a, a uh, I, I forget his name, but I will look it up but he was on this documentary about the criminal justice system. And, you know, he was, he was, he spent like 20 years in in prison. Hmm. Um, I don't remember the exact details, but it's something to that effect. And, 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 um, you know, was wrongfully accused, blah, blah, blah. And it's like something that happens a lot. Um, So I'm going to, I did another one the day before, uh, oh, it's in here somewhere. Um, I love the purple on that one though. Yeah. Um, So, um, yeah, so I just, I was watching that documentary. I was like, oh my gosh, these guys have uh, just so much amazing um, character, which is, which is, which is one of my favorite things about portrait painting is, is yeah. just the character. I like, I like painting like old rugged people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, more than like, I mean, I like painting somebody young and beautiful, like that's great, but I, I think I like old and rugged and yeah. Like an old pair of leather shoes. Like that's kind of my thing. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, they can, you can like see their life on their face, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, tell us, Carrie, what are you working on now? If you feel like telling us. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to work on these pan pastels, these dailies for about the next month. Um, and then, and then the next month um, I'm doing an a la prima portrait painting, oil painting. So, so I'm just going to do all the prima portraits for a month and just keep cranking them out and posting them. And for me, that's mm. super fun. Um, I do have a couple of larger commissions. I have one commission what, kind of waiting in the wings for, um, for someone in, down in Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so I'm kind of bouncing back and forth right now between two different marketing strategies. Mm-hmm. One is the Instagram thing <laughs> and that whole thing which everybody is is doing these days um yeah and the other is kind of more old school just meeting um trying to use my what connections i have to 
develop a portrait painting career um, for uh, people who can't afford me. <laughs> so okay. that's that's the that's sort of I have two two tracks going. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And and my goals, my life goals, I want to be. I just, I want to be the best portrait painter on the planet, basically. So. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. That's awesome. That's I still awesome. you know, I told you, like, you know, I need something to push me and focus me. Yes. You know, so it that's a, a bit like Marvel, Marvel superhero, though. Like, I'm going to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. right, 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 yeah. That's awesome. That Very should be cool. my Halloween costume next year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you could create a new superhero. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's not a bad idea because I know I've been a starving artist as a for Halloween like years ago. That was. But wait, you don't want to embody that a, anymore. Now I just need a cape or something. But. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to embody a starving artist anymore. You don't want to even True. to be that, right? Yeah. No, I want to be a successful artist. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I want to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired of the starving artists and tired of it, which I know we've talked about before. But. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And yeah, um, I, I will over. say I've that yeah. I will say that I feel that this is one of the best times to be an artist because mm -hmm. we have so much power and we have so many more tools than we ever have had before. Like, um, so Instagram is one tool. I know a lot of artists are frustrated by it, but if you set up a system to basically catch people who are interested in you, like get their right. emails, um, right. and build your email list, like your email list is your gold mine. That is your, um, I mean, that's where you're gonna get a lot of your sales. And, right. you know, we have so much more power than we realize. Like, you know, back in, you know, the 1800s, it's like you, you would have had to like write a letter to every single person that has ever been interested in your art to let them know that you finished a new painting, you know? But yeah. now you can just send out a beautiful image to everyone who's ever been interested. Um, it's just amazing. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, and, and artists are so much more in control of their careers um, because it's not just galleries who have access to collectors these days, right? Um, like I'm right. sure you pulled work off of Instagram, right? Um, I haven't really done too much of that. Uh, uh, um, I know I have a lot of friends that seem to do very well at that. Um, mm -hmm. um, a little bit, a little bit. It's a very different uh, um, tier of price. The price range is very different than if you right. find collectors on your own and you bring them to the, your studio. Like that's my yeah. goal is... Mm -hmm. is I want to eventually, once, once we sell this house, I want to buy my own house and you develop a studio and you have, you invite people, you know, you got to be social and have dinner parties or whatever and sprinkle the magic. I call, I call it, you know, and, and, um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. and, and that's, that's amazing as well, because so even the ability to do that, instead of like sending out handwritten invitations, you can text people or call people. There's just so many better ways to keep in touch that we have yeah. you know, the availability for these days as an artist, as opposed to like every other century before us. So, um, you know, to really take advantage of that and. Yeah, we have a lot, there's a lot of tools for sure. And with the internet, I mean, it's, it's right. you're not reliant, you're not solely reliant on the gallery anymore. Right. Right. Um, and um, yeah, and I love what you said about like creating an experience for your collectors, which is mm -hmm. also fun for you, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's part of the game. Yeah, now this is pre coronavirus, but um, a couple of years ago, this is one of my favorite memories of my art. I was like, I had people over, I invited like every friends and then like good collectors that I you know, was very comfortable with. And I had a violinist there and I made like all this food and I had like all my art up on the walls. And, um, you know, I made it clear that it was, a lot of it was available because I put price tags on it, but it was more of like a collector appreciation party. And cool. 
and it was so fun and rewarding and I did sell a bunch of things um great so yeah. and it's just like building huh. those authentic relationships with people like um not just seeing them as like a dollar sign you know seeing them as like sure. these people are supporting my career you know yeah it's it's like a, you're developing relationships mm -hmm. I think sure. it's important to see it that way yeah well um I know we're way over time, but um, okay. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I have one other thought. You know, I think my, my um, which is that, you know, for, for young artists coming up, um, you know, who might be in high school, might be in college, um, or even after that, you know, uh, my dad always told me, he likes to, he, he quotes his uncle who, whom I never met. Um, his uncle told him when he was a kid, he's like, you know, if you, if you become the best at something, you will never lack for work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's been extremely true in my path. Um, you know, I, I, I was always very good artist, mm -hmm. uh, um, but I realized that I, I needed more training and I got that training um, at an atelier under a master, spent five years and that catapulted me to a whole other level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nothing, I think if you become exceptional at something, you will always be in demand. Mm, that's so powerful. It's so good. Yeah. That actually reminds me of, I did an interview of Joshua Rose, who was the former editor of American Art Collector. And he said, um, just make good work. He said, if you make good work, um, you won't, you really won't have to like chase anything. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know if I a hundred percent agree with that. I think you still have to have some desire for things, but I think um, you still have to be smart about your strategy and your marketing yeah. and how you position yourself and all that stuff and relationships you make. Yeah. But I get his, his sentiment that like you, you're not going to need a whole marketing team if like your work is good, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it'll although, speak for itself. Yes, although it would be nice to have somebody handle everything. <laughs> <Pat>. <laughs> well, once you get successful enough, you can have assistance. I mean, I'd love to have an assistant, uh, yes. uh, you know, one day. Yes, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, where can people find you, Carrie? I know that you have work for sale and then also you have classes people can sign up with. Um, two places. So I'm on Instagram at paint, carry paint. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of my newer works on there, daily stuff, my two classes that are coming up workshops. I, I usually do workshops all over the country, but you know, you can't right now. Mm -hmm. Um, um, uh, so there's Instagram and then just my website, which is just my name.com carrydone.com. And that's got more of my like uh, traditional portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. And I will put those links down below so you guys can go follow okay. Carrie, take awesome. his classes, buy his artwork. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, Carrie. This was so fun and I hope it's really helpful to people. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you, Jessica. I know we've been talking for a while about doing this and uh, so I'm glad we you know, made it happen. Yes. Yeah, it's a great topic and you're so good at asking like really excellent questions. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for being very transparent and um, just know to all those artists out there, you're not alone. It is, there's no, um, there's no clear path for artists once they graduate. Correct. School. So I, I'm just right. hoping that this sheds a little bit of light onto different options that you might have. So. Right. Find, find a mentor, find mentors, find a community mm -hmm. um, because that's not like getting a job at a company and you just sort of stay there and mm -hmm go up through management, you, you know, you, you're kind of wandering in the woods a little bit. So community mentors, mm -hmm. training. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Yeah. Carrie, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> bye. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs>